So this weekend I'm stuck at home. I'm on call. I can't go to the hills and I can't go find gold. So what do I do? Even better question, you want to find gold, but you don't live anywhere where there's gold to be found, but you want to try just to get the experience. Stand by, I've got an answer. Let's get to it. Howdy y'all, welcome back to Rubber Ducky Prospecting. So what do I mean when I say, Andy, you're not gonna go to the hills and get gold, but you're gonna show me how to get some gold this weekend, even though you can't leave. Well, yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use something called a gold pay dirt. Gold pay dirt is something you can buy online, but make sure you go to a reputable dealer and make sure that in that online sale, it says that it has a guaranteed minimum amount of gold added to the bag. A lot of times that means you get unscreened pay dirt that they've harvested from somewhere, plus they add in a guaranteed amount of gold. So you're always guaranteed with one of these reputable dealers to get dirt that has a guaranteed amount of gold. So this week, I'm gonna be using Vendetta Prospecting. Now, Vendetta Prospecting doesn't know that this bag of dirt that I ordered is for me to do a video. So, surprise, it's a bag of dirt that I bought from you. That also means that this is gonna be a fair review of his pay dirt because he's not going to have spiced it up with anything extra just so that he gets a good review. So, what I'm gonna be doing this week is Vendetta, Vendetta Prospecting. This is a one gram bag of pay dirt. So there's a guaranteed minimum of one gram of gold inside of this bag, plus whatever was there from the claim where he harvested this dirt from. So let's take this over to our table, get things set up, and see what we can get out of this bag of gold. All right, so what do we need to do some backyard prospecting? Well, the first thing you need is a gold pan. You can go on Amazon, you can buy one of these green Garrett gold pans for not a whole lot of money. There are other things you could use. Um, they're not as effective as using a real gold pan, so get yourself a gold pan. When you get it, get some sandpaper or some Brillo pad, steel wool, rough the inside of that thing up so that uh, it's nice and scratched up. We don't want pretty uh, pretty clean plastic. We also want it washed down really well with like Dawn dishwashing detergent to get rid of all the oils from the uh, uh, molding process of the pan so that uh, the oils don't make things float away and help us with that surface tension. Second thing we're gonna need, of course, is a bag pay dirt. So as I said, today we're gonna be working with Vendetta Prospecting. We got some uh, Hasa Yampa, one gram gold added pay dirt. What else are we gonna need? Well, we're gonna have to have something to pan in. Don't have to have anything fancy. We're just gonna use this little cheap storage bin. Fill that up with water. And then we're gonna add some jet dry to that water in order to break down the surface tension so that the gold won't want to float away. That reduce good reduced surface tension, make that water nice and soft. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to have is a couple of miscellaneous containers because we're gonna to have to take the dirt and classify it. In other words, break it down into different sizes of material. I don't want to do big material and small material all in the same pan. It makes panning a little more difficult. So a couple of things that I can classify into. So what am I going to use to classify? Well, you can go down, you can spend lots of money, and you can go buy a nice 30 mesh uh, classifier like this one with the screen on the bottom. If you don't have that, go to your kitchen, you might have one of these laying around, just a good old fashioned kitchen strainer. This is gonna work just fine for classifying our dirt. That's what we're gonna to use today. So let me go fill this tub up with water, get everything ready, and we'll come back and see where we're going. So let's take a look at our pay dirt. So 
So as you can tell, looking at it, pay dirt is nice and dry, which is something we want because we're going to dry classify today. So we want the dirt to be nice and dry. You can see uh, this particular pay dirt. It's got some small gravels in it. It's got some sand. It looks like it's got some black sand in it. All in all, looks like pretty good stuff. So let's go ahead and get this classified. So we're going to classify this down into what we're going to call today plus kitchen strainer and minus kitchen strainer. Plus kitchen strainer is all the stuff that won't go through the strainer. Minus kitchen strainer is everything that's going to fall into the pan down below. So we're going to take this nice dry pay dirt and we're just going to sift it through this kitchen strainer. And every once in a while, I'm gonna take this big stuff, throw it into another container. And that's our pay dirt classified. So we have our minus kitchen strainer and our plus kitchen size, uh, kitchen strainer size material. So usually what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna pan my plus kitchen strainer size material down first. So let me go ahead and transfer some stuff around, get this in a pan and then get set up and we'll show you the panning. All right, we're ready to start painting the plus kitchen strainer size material. So I'm gonna get this material good and wet. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake it up. This is called stratifying. And what I'm trying to do is create a lot of turbulence so that the gold, which is heavier than everything else in the pan, sinks to the bottom. And then I'm gonna pan all the light stuff off the top. So we get it stratified and then we start rinsing. So you're going to notice I'm going to make a little wave, it's going to go in, it's going to come out, and that light stuff is going to wash right off the top. We'll stratify it down again, and we'll pan it some more. So we're trying to wash all the light material out. Now these riffles that are in this pan are there for a reason. So again, the gold is heavier than everything else that's in this pan. So as the water flows over the lighter material, the gold's gonna tend to wanna sink into those riffles. And I pretty well got it down to where I think I want it to be. So we're gonna do some tap, 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 tap off to the side. And then we'll roll this thing back. So now I'm going to wash all that light stuff off. And look at there. Mr. Vendetta has given me two very nice little picker nuggets in that pan. So we'll put that aside and then we'll get the minus stuff. All right, for the minus kitchen strainer size material, I'm going to do this a little bit at a time. Put some water in the pan. We're gonna put some of our material in here. Get it nice and wet. Get it stratified. And start washing those blonde sands off the top of this pan. You can already see the black sand starting to show its head underneath those blondes and the black sands are going to stay behind in those riffles. Stratify it down again and wash and wash some more. Again you can see that black sand staying behind in the riffles and the blonde sands are rinsing right off the top. You see that's a nice little wave action. We want the water to go to the back of the pan and then 
wash its way forward. We'll stratify this down again. You'll notice when we stratify, just as I said, so now all the blonde sands have come to the top, all the black sands are on the bottom, so now we'll wash all those light blonde sands off. The blonde sands are much lighter than those black sands are. The black sands are usually made up of a combination of hematite and magnetite, both of which are an iron compound. And uh, quite often when you're finding good gold, even out in the wild, this is what you're gonna see is the finer gold is gonna run with the black sands. The slightly coarser gold that we're gonna find quite often, you'll hear me complain in my videos about, wow, this black sand is really coarse. And that's a good sign because the coarser, thicker black sand has a better possibility of having bigger pieces of gold associated with it when we're uh, digging for the flood golds in a lot of places where we're uh, digging for flood golds. So we're going to try and wash most of this blonde sand off at back and forth wave motion. Stratify this again. Wash most of that off. And then we'll add some more of this material. Get that good and wet. Get it all stratified. You can see I'm making a, the pan very turbulent. And then we'll start washing that off. Stratify that down. And wash the blondes off. Now you can see how the black sand is starting to encroach on that first ripple a lot, so that's telling me. I need to stratify it down again. I want it to settle in, you can see, well back below that first riffle. And then we'll start to wash the top off and get the lights off again. Part of what's happening as we're doing this, you can see there's like a groove almost in your gold pan. And we're hoping when I stratify, I hold it at an angle so that the gold down here is dropping into that groove since it's the heaviest thing and that'll kind of lock it in place while we pan all this other stuff off. So we're just gonna keep on stratifying and panning, taking these blonde sands off. Wash, rinse, repeat. All right, let me uh, finish panning this down to uh, just about the end of the black sands, and then I'll show you how I finish pan this stuff off and uh, show you what we get for gold out of this bag. All right, so I've got the pan down to pretty much just my black sands. Now, one of the things we're probably gonna wanna do at this point, another one of those handy things to have is one of these magnets like this. Uh, this one has a plunger on it. When I push the plunger down, the magnet slides down to the bottom of the tube. When I let it go, the magnet goes up. So I push it down and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna try and pick up any magnetics, any of that magnetite that may be in here. So you can see there's a big old chunk of magnetite on there. I have another container next to us here with some water in it. I'm gonna drop it into that container can go back and lightly pick it up again, drop it in another spot. So basically what I'm looking for is whether I got any gold that got caught up in that magnetic material when it hit to the magnet. Uh, the other way I'll do this a lot of times is I'll slide my material so I have some blank space up here, take my magnet pick up the magnetics and you can see what I'm talking about right there on the end of that magnet there's some gold that got caught up in the uh, magnetics in that magnet so that's one of those things that we're looking for so I'm going to take and drop that in a corner over here and then lightly go back over and pick up drop it again lightly go over and pick up now I can go get rid of it and come back to this mess, drop it, lightly go over. You'll notice I'm doing a lot of rinsing motion with it in order to, to really try and make anything heavy fall. 
and we're just going to keep doing this and you can already see the gold that was caught up in that is now on the bottom of the pan versus what I'm picking up with the magnet doesn't have any gold in it so we're just going to keep doing this drop it in an empty spot pick some of it up I don't see any gold keep that rinsing motion going no gold big glob drop it Keep that rinsing motion going. I don't see anything in it. And we'll keep doing that until we've got all the magnetic sands out of here. Now there are two different types of materials, as I said, in this black sand. So you have a magnetic material, which is magnetite, and you have a non-magnetic material, which is hematite. They're both iron-based, they're both related, but the hematite is not magnetic, whereas the magnetite, as the name infers, is highly magnetic. So that stuff gets in your way. The reason why it gets in your way when you're panning is because the magnetite is one of the next densest things compared to the gold that's in the pan. So I'm trying to get rid of some of the, the closeness and density of materials to make it easier to pan this fine gold out of this stuff as compared to having the more dense magnetite, the almost as dense hematite, and then the just a little more dense gold all competing. It also takes some more of this more coarse grain material out of my way so that it's easier for me to pan the gold. There's not as much material in there for me to have to deal with because I've taken all of these heavy magnetics out of the way. So let me finish this up and we'll come back when I've got that done and start panning again. Okay, so I'm done with the magnet. We've got pretty much all of the magnetics out of there and you can see there was a pretty fair amount of uh, the magnetite in this material let me uh, dump a little water you can kind of get an idea of how much magnetite was left in this material and the other thing that you're going to start to notice is at least in this bag is you can already start to see the smile of gold that's starting to happen in there with that minus kitchen strainer size stuff so let's go ahead and change my camera angle and get this thing ready. We'll pan this down and get the last of that gold out. All right, so we're back. You can see that uh, I put fresh water in the pan. I did add again some jet dry to the water so that our surface tension is low again. And I have the material that we're, we're panning and getting the magnetics out of in the pan here. So now we're gonna do what I call finish panning. So we're gonna stratify and again, we're going to we're trying to keep this uh, pan so that this groove here is a trap. And I stratify the materials around, and now I can pan this off. Now you'll notice I'm not doing this on the side with the riffles on it. I'm doing this on the side with no riffles. And I'm trying to pan the last of the black sand off. So we're gonna pan this down. We're gonna watch for any visible gold that is happening to wander up into this sand and you notice we're going to go really slow little small waves gently wash this stuff off bring it back stratify it back into that corner and start washing material off now if my pan's nice and scratched up in theory i should not lose any of the gold and it should stick to the pan to those scratches. Sometimes that doesn't always work as planned, however. And I'm not sure if I saw a piece of gold migrating up, but we're gonna go ahead and just keep on going. A lot of times the other thing I'll do is while it's in the water, I'll roll the pan back, shake it back and forth, and then shake it forward just a little bit. Hopefully that gets that gold back in that crack in the back corner so we can take some of this black sand off. I give it a little shake, shake, shake. Wash this sand off. 
Again, keeping a very close eye for gold. Wash it back into that corner. Shake, shake, shake. Taking that black sand off. You'll notice I'm being a little more aggressive now. I'm starting to see the gold appear in the corner back here. So I'm going to shake, shake, shake. Keep that in the water. And then start washing again. If I'm fairly sure that I don't have any gold in this black sand that's up here, I can just take my finger and wash that away just to speed the process. You see the gold down here in the crack. One little piece has worked its way out. So I'm gonna stratify that back. Do that shake, shake, shake. Let a little of it walk forward. And start washing that sand out. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that this stuff up here, as you can see, yep, yep, there's some gold in it. So I'll finger everything that's in front of that off, shake, shake, shake it back into that corner. Start walking this off. So this is just a slow, tedious process, getting the last of these heavy black sands out without losing any of your gold, hopefully. And the one thing I will tell you is even though you're going to see me do this once, I will probably go back probably twice and go through everything that I've panned here into this tub and pan it once again just to make sure that any gold that got away from me that I can recover. So here again you can see gold starting to walk its way up but I don't see anything in all this. I'm going to just use my finger and get that out of the way and then we'll stratify everything back in the corner. And once you do this a time or two, you'll start to get the hang. You can see the gold right there. So let's shake that back into that crack. Shake everything else forward. And the more of this black sand that I get to go away, the easier this gets to try and keep that gold into that crack in the corner. Shake that into the corner. And I'm just going to make all of this black sand go away. I see a piece of gold right there. Slow, tedious. see the gold that's hanging out out here so we're just going to be really careful and really watchful we're going to make small waves you see how the gold is sticking to the pan because it's all scratched up all of this stuff out here is safe I'm going to make it go away I'll stratify that back into the corner again make all this black sand disappear. So hopefully when we're all done, we have just nice clean gold. And you see how all the gold stayed in the, the back of the pan? And it was mostly black sand that washed up. There is a little gold in there. But now I'm gonna try and wash that black sand off without washing the gold away. Again, that roughed up pan, it's your friend. You don't want a pretty clean, perfect gold pan. Stratify that back, see if any more black sand washes up.
And that is a pretty nice smile of mostly clean gold from this uh, one gram bag of Vendetta Hasayampa pay dirt. Let me go get my snuffer bottle. We'll get this snuffered up and get it dried up and on the scale and let you know how we did. We should have at least one gram between this and the couple of nuggets I pulled out. And for those of you that are new to this, uh, the other question you might have is how do I get the gold out of the pan? I've got that happy little smile of gold, so I'm going to use a snuffer bottle. And what I want to do is I want to fill the bottle with water. And now that I got some water in the bottle, it's a little more than halfway full, I'm gonna squeeze the water out of the bottle and I'm gonna take the tip of the snuffer and while I'm letting go of the snuffer with my hand, it's gonna vacuum that gold right on up out of there. We'll let it settle in, make sure there's none in the straw. And so now all the gold is in our snuffer bottle. I can get it where you guys can see it. I don't know if you can see that, but the gold is in the snuffer bottle. All right, let's dry it up, weigh it up, and see what we got. All right, so we got all the gold all dried up, and we're ready to weigh it up. So you can see the scale is teared out to zero with the dish on it. So let's start with these happy little nuggets. That's 0.27 grams. That's 0.6 grams. Now we'll add our fines. One point zero zero eight grams for the Vendetta Prospecting Hasayampa one gram bag. And Vendetta has come through on his guarantee of one gram of gold. So I hope you enjoyed our little video of how to do backyard prospecting. Whether you're stuck at home like I am or you live in an area where you just there is no gold, you can't go gold prospecting. So for the cost of a gold pan and a couple of other things you probably have laying around the house and then buying yourself a bag of pay dirt from one of these pay dirt vendors like Vendetta Prospecting, um, you can get your own gold just like we do out in the field. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please like, share, subscribe, watch my other videos. Love to monetize my channel. Need all the watch hours I can get. Tell your friends about us. And we hope we see you again next time. Bye-bye.